What's up, y'all, and welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with AJ. We're in the greatest kitchen of all, the great outdoors. Anyway, I know I said it's the another episode, but it's really the next episode, really only the second episode. I made one and kind of slacked off. Anyway, in the first one, I did a 42-ounce tomahawk ribeye, and it was really, really delicious. And put the link in the bio below, in the caption, in the whatever you call that little area below me right now. Check that video out, but today I'm going to make it up to you for being gone so long. I'm going to cook a 33 ounce prime ribeye that I picked up at HEB this morning. I'm going to season it with Holy Cow from Meat Church. They're based here in Texas, so I'm already a fan. And I'm going to cook it on the Traeger uh, on smoke, which is about uh, like 189 to 200 degrees. And I'm going to cook it on that until the internal temperature of the ribeye is about 110 degrees. And then I'm going to sear it off over a hot, hot, hot bed of coals. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to show you everything that I do. But really, the only three ingredients you really need are meat, heat, and eat. And I just came up with that a while ago. So I'm probably going to put it on a t-shirt. And you can probably click that link uh, down below also uh, if you want one. Or I might not even do it. So if you're seeing me say this, it's probably there. If, uh, if not, then I'm just talking to myself which I, uh, which I do a lot. Anyway, so I'm about to fire up my Traeger. Uh, got a good piece of meat and, uh, here we go. Check it out. All right. got my Traeger here. I'm going to go ahead and turn her on, set it to smoke or not. Live TV y'all. Oh, I had it off. Oh, stupid. Anyway, I'm going to turn it on now for real. Hit it on smoke, let it fire up and do what it does, and uh, come back here in a minute and it'll be ready to go. Look at that thing. That's a two inch prime. Got some marble in here. Uh, what you want to look for when you're buying a steak is this uh, little marbling is what they call it, where you see all the fat going through. That's going to be uh, basically just delicious. So anyway, I got my meat church. Holy cow, this is uh, very peppery, very delicious. You can see all the little pepper granules in there. Yeah, it's legit, trust me. Uh, and then a little bit of olive oil. So I almost blew the whole thing. I forgot to get the most important ingredient, topo. Ah, man, it's good. Anyway, back to the meat. Just a little bit of olive oil, that might've been too much. It's okay. Uh, make sure, pro tip, you get that fat right there because that's going to be the most delicious part of the steak. And also this cap right here. There's a fancy name for that. I don't know what it is. You could probably Google it. Or I'm sure the trolls will tell me in the comments. Nice and oiled up. Get this other little side right here too. Get you enough oil on there. Ingredient number two, meat church. Meat Church, holy cow, this stuff is super good. And just a little bit, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go too crazy on it, but it's a huge piece of steak, so it can handle as much as you put on there. Get that nice and good like on there. This is gonna form a really good crust when it hits that uh, searing, 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 hot, 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 hot charcoal fire. I'm gonna get this top portion here okay so much noise out here today so much noise it's okay all right back side of the steak a little bit of wool Kind of just pat it in a little bit, just a little bit. Oh, and now the most important part of the steak.
but we're good there. So that's what it should look like. Nice and ready to go. Man, look how thick that thing is. So this is gonna take about an hour, maybe a little bit longer to get up to temp on the internal that we want, uh, which is I guess about 110 degrees or so. I'll be checking it at about an hour. Uh, it might go a little bit longer, but we'll see. Uh, the Traeger is usually pretty consistent. I mean, I've done this already like one whole time, so pretty much an expert. Yeah, we'll monitor it with the uh, little thermometer and uh, make sure we don't blow it because the last thing you want to do is overcook the steak. We're going to go for a nice medium rare. Uh, and if it's not medium rare, I'm going to edit this part out and say that I was going for medium and be like, oh no. Somebody in my family didn't want medium rare and then I'll pretend like I meant to cook it uh, medium. Hopefully that won't happen. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, it's really, really crucial to season your steak just minutes before you put it on the grill. There's so many love bugs around me, it's ridiculous. I hope this video doesn't get flagged for adult content anyway. Uh, yeah, so don't season your steak until right before you put it on because the salt in the seasoning will start to pull the moisture out. I season the meat right before I'm about to put it on. So like 10 minutes, five minutes, 30 seconds, two seconds, if you want to burn your hand while it's in there. I don't recommend that, but whatever. I'm gonna try to get this steak in here without dropping it. I put this thermometer off of my barbecue pit in there just to hold the steak up because I don't want it to rest on the actual steak. I like to rest it on the side. The steak. All right, so I'm gonna try to get this in there and just stand it up on its side and lean it on this little thermometer if I have to, uh, just so it kind of stays upright. I don't know if that really matters, but that's how I did it the last time I did a steak in here, and it came out really good. Uh, so that way the heat isn't directly touching uh, the actual sides of the steak, which I don't think matters, but I'm kind of weird. Here we go, T minus one hour. So it's been a few minutes. Uh, definitely don't open it, because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Chilling with my sous chef. Don't lick that. I forgot to put the little bucket on my Traeger earlier, and yeah, it started to drip. So now I'm just chilling, waiting, killing time, relaxing. I was gonna sit in front of the TV, but I was like, nah. It's way too beautiful out here. I'm just gonna sit out here and drink. There's so many love bugs, seriously. They are everywhere. It's just flying. All right, so it's been about uh, 45 minutes or so, and I'm gonna check the internal temperature real quick just to make sure it doesn't get away from me because the last thing I wanna do uh, is overcook this steak. I'm gonna open it up real quick, take a look, uh, put my thermometer in there, and then I'll be getting my coals ready to sear it off. So we're getting close, uh, not quite there yet though, but uh, check it out, here we go. Let's see what she looks like. It's been uh, however long I just said. Okay, it flipped over, no big deal. Looking nice and uh, nice and red. What do you think, dog? Yeah, you don't care. All right, so let me go ahead and put my uh, temperature probe in there real quick. So I got my uh, trusty, where's the lens? Trusty little thermometer here nothing fancy it's like three dollars at HUB or something and uh, you want to get it right in the middle I don't know if I can do this with one hand uh, right in the middle okay I'm probably gonna have to put the phone down okay hang on be right back be right back okay I'm right back so put it right in the middle and I'm gonna try to read it out uh, we're right at 100 ish focus 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 there we go uh, so we're coming up right at 100, so we're looking really, really good. I think 135, 140 is mid-rare, so uh, we're getting pretty close. It's better to err on the side of uh, not cooked enough. So I'm going to let this sit in here for probably another, I don't know, 20 minutes while my coals get ready to go, and we'll be ready to sear her off. All right, I'm back. Or not back. I guess I've been here the whole time. All right, I'm over here at my little pit, which I don't know if you can see it in this shot or not. Don't ever judge a pit by its size, because let me tell you, every steak that you see me cooking on Instagram and Facebook, except for the tomahawk, I cooked in this little pit, and it was the cheapest pit I've ever bought. 
and it's the pit I've used the most. Yeah, check it out. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. You know you want to laugh. Anyway, little old BD, and it's even taking a hit. It fell off the bed of my truck one time. That's why it's all jacked up. Char griller. I know what you're going to say. Why are you using briquettes? But you know what? We just had a hurricane, and I didn't remember to get any more B&B because I used it all. I didn't have power, so I was cooking all on my B&B &B charcoal. But today I'm using briquettes, and it's okay because not everybody can get the good stuff. But everybody has a local H-E-B or a local grocery store or whatever. I promise this video isn't sponsored by H-E-B. I've said H-E-B about 10 times. Briquettes, they're not that bad, trust me. It's okay, You'll, we'll be all right. But if you can get some B&B &B or just some pieces of oak, pecan or whatever is native in your area, that's always gonna be better than a briquette, but uh, there's nothing wrong with briquettes. I bet the steak is still gonna be delicious. So stay out of the comments, trolls. I see you, are you already starting to type? I can feel it. I mean, geez, this video isn't even uploaded yet and you're already about to start hating, whatever. Anyway, here we go. All right, trusty briquettes going in. I always like to use more than I think I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a really good size fire in here. See, I think that should be enough, but we're gonna add some more because, I mean, you can always make the fire colder. You can't ever make it hotter, and once you're in it, the winter, it's too late. So make it hot, 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 and then we can reduce later. Let me fix this. Just move these guys around a little bit here. Okay, and you might think, hey, that's a lot of briquettes, but you know what? We wanna cook this at, as close to a thousand degrees as possible. So probably between seven and 900 degrees, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, make a little mound and we'll be ready to go. Time for my Boy Scout fluid. Also from H-E-B. I use it a lot. Oh yeah, you can taste the charcoal fluid, but you know what, you can't if you let it burn out all the way. So don't let, people stop you from using lighter fluid because I don't have any regular wood and okay anyway so that's all of that here we go I don't know why I need to light more than one place it's not like it matters anyway it's lit early lit that's getting hot I can feel it oh yeah so another thing that I like to kind of do is uh Make sure your little air holes are pointing towards the direction of the wind. My coals are getting nice and good. Uh, burning real hot right now. But I think they're mesquite, yeah, mesquite briquettes. We're gonna let these burn down all the way. Make sure we get all of that uh, lighter fluid burned out of it. So it's usually about 30 minutes or so. My fire's looking real good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, grill grates on top of there real quick and make sure that those are piping hot whenever I put that steak on there, so. I got the first one in there real smooth. I'm probably not going to do it until I got the film going on. Nope, of course not. Still one handed here, y'all. Of course, my sous chef's just sitting here looking at me, watching me fail. It's okay. Okay, there we go. So, alright, good to go. I'm going to do what's called the constant flip method, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to put the steak down for about 30, 40 seconds at the most, maybe a minute, depending on how hot the fire is, but it's really, really hot. So if your fire isn't as hot as mine, uh, you can maybe go a minute, minute, 15 seconds, but I just want to keep flipping it over and over again, uh, make sure everything gets nice and charred and uh, get the flame all over everything. So we're gonna go with uh, just like a constant, consistent crust uh, with that meat church seasoning. It's gonna get real nice and pretty, a nice crust. That's where all the flavor is, especially when it gets really, really hot. That's the plan. Fire's almost ready, I don't know if you can see it, but getting closer, again, getting closer. Another reason behind the constant flip method, uh, I didn't bring it up just now, and I was thinking about it, uh, so if you notice, I don't know why I'm still holding the shovel. If you notice in a steak, sometimes you have like a steak this thick and like that much of it is cooked the temperature that you want it. 
well that's because it got too hot on this side and then too hot on this side and only the center was perfectly cooked if you constantly flip it it doesn't have a chance to cook all the way through so you don't get that banding and weird gradation so you're cooking it really hot on this side and then you flip it over and it's cooking really hot on the other side and it cooks evenly the whole time so you're left with a steak this thick having a little bit of crust on the outside and then the rest of it is cooked perfectly to the temperature that you want. Pro tip, first of all, always check your tongs, make sure they work. Second of all, get you some long tongs. This fire is super hot, scratch that, super duper hot. You don't want short tongs trying to put your hand in there. Them long ones, always check them. Double check, they work. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open the open the little pit because I don't wanna have an accident with my steak. Oh yeah, that fire is good. Double check your tongs, okay. Over to the Traeger. Scoop it up. Do not have an accident. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I don't wanna drop it, don't wanna drop it, don't wanna drop it. Okay, here we go, you ready? And moment of truth. So I just counted out seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You might get some flare ups, 13, 14, it's okay. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20. If it gets a little out of hand, I just move it over to the part that's not as hot. I don't know what I'm at. 27, 28. Who knows? Time to flip it. Oh, yeah. Three. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move it over here to this part where there aren't as many coals and kind of let this uh, flame go out that's on fire on my grill. That just means we got a lot of grease on there. All right, I had a bit of a situation. My phone got too close to the fire and it got too hot and went into emergency mode, so I couldn't use it for a minute. Anyway, it's back, here we go. Get the sides nice and toasty. Close it up when the fire gets out of hand. All right, flipping it. I don't want to get too close. It's hot, as you can tell. So the most pro tip I can give you is to get the sides. Get the sides of that steak. That's where the flavor's at. Boop study, boop study. That's looking good. So you want to check it by tapping it like that. Feeling how firm it is. If it feels like this, it's rare. It feels like that, it's medium rare. If it feels like this or this, you should have just made chicken. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up in foil. And we're going to let it sit, which is the hardest part for about 10 or 15 minutes and let it rest because all the juices will come out if you cut right into it right after it's still hot and that fire is really 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 hot so 10 15 minutes let it rest and then we'll cut into it we're gonna wait a little bit longer the longer we wait the better it's gonna be and it's gonna stay warm in that foil i got it here on my trusty tin roof home cutting board and we'll get it ready to slice it up family style here in about a i don't know about five more minutes and we'll let it rest and we'll be good all right, it's been about 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell that right now. That is beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and slice this up family style. And then that way, because I'm not gonna eat this by myself, I'm gonna share it. Everybody can get a little slice. Okay, moment of truth.
Oh yeah. You don't want to slice it too thin. You don't want to slice it too thick. It'll dry out. If it's too thick, it's just too big. So typically on the ribeye, the fattier side right here, which is where I'm cutting, usually uh, is a little less done than this part back here. This part tends to get a little bit more cooked just on the end. This side is always the best side. That's where the cap is, that's where all the fat is, and that's where it's a little bit less cooked. So, let's take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Look at it. So yeah, you can see this is a little bit more towards the medium, and this is more definitely on the medium rare. That's the good side. And this little nugget at the end is always delicious. Don't forget that nugget. I mean, look at that. That is, I mean, perfect mid-rare. Maybe a little bit on the rare side, but if you want to error, that's the side you want to go on. That's, that's it. Time to eat. Now the ultimate, ultimate moment of truth. Reverse sear on the Traeger. Super high heat. You can't go wrong. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Hmm. I can't even think right now. Wow. Man. That's so good, let me tell you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll probably try to do these more than uh, just two a year, but we'll see. Anyway, this is really, really good. Mm. Mm. That's it. I gotta go. I need a moment. I need a moment.